All right, today we're talking about developing your speech. Uh, so we get to kind of like get our hands dirty and actually start building a speech today. I want to talk uh, about what I think is the most important element of the chapter, which is topic selection. If you select a good topic, that's 99% of the work to producing a good speech. If you select a bad topic, you can't make a good speech. Um, so what do, I, what do I mean by a good topic and a bad topic? It really depends on the speaker. Uh, a good topic is a topic the speaker personally cares about and a topic that the speaker is passionate about and knows a little bit about. You can pick almost any topic in the world. And so why would you uh, pick any topic other than something you're passionate about and that you know about? However, what I have found is um, a lot of times, especially in this public speaking class, students uh, approach speeches as dry academic exercises instead of as an opportunity to explore and communicate your, your life passion. Uh, I really encourage you to uh, to go that second route, pick topics about stuff that you think is cool, stuff that something that you care about, rather than um, whatever the driest, easiest topic is to just get the get the job done. You you will not be as successful if you pick a topic that you're not interested in, that you don't think the audience is interested in. So brainstorm your topic ideas. Uh, do not just pick the first one that occurs to you, even if you think your first idea is really good. Um, my personal experience with myself is that my first idea is never the best idea that I could have. So I get out a piece of paper and a pencil and I write down 10 ideas, 20 ideas, 25 ideas. And then I look at that list and I, and I, I pick the most interesting and best um, item I'd written down. And it's never the first idea I'd, I'd written down. So please uh, stimulate your thinking using some brainstorming methods as outlined in the text. Pick a, pick a cool topic. You know, um, I'm really speaking to you from my personal experience uh, here because I never want to hear another speech again about how to tie-dye a t-shirt. Um, having taught this class for a number of semesters, I, I know how to do that now. Um, I've heard lots of speeches on um, euthanasia, lots of speeches on whether to legalize marijuana, all of these things that immediately pop into your head, the first idea about, oh, I need to give a demonstration speech, better speak about how to tie-dye a t-shirt. Need to give a persuasive speech, better do marijuana, because that's the first thing that popped into my head. Um, so I won't approve those topics anymore, the ones that obviously uh, occur to people's uh, minds right away. Um, and on my, my end, I have a pretty good sense of what those topics are, because I do see them recurring semester after semester. And the, the the problem with it is that I know that that student isn't passionate about how to tie dye a t-shirt. You know, um, they're just picking it because they think it's what I want them to pick. They're, they're picking they're picking it because they think it fits the assignment. Um, but it only fits the assignment if it's something you're uh, passionate about. Okay, so um, it's important to pick a topic that is. Um, important to you. You also need to consider the audience a little bit and consider the assignment a little bit as well. Uh, your speech has to fit into the uh, allotted time. It can't go over or under. And it also needs to be a topic that's not going to offend the audience or make the audience uncomfortable, um, but one that you, you, know, you think your audience will be able to um, latch on to, especially if you communicate it using your passion. Uh, people are likely to get behind it. So we've talked about the importance of selecting a topic. That's the main thing I wanted to, to cover today. Select a good topic, a topic that is unique, a topic that is timely, a topic that you are interested in or passionate about, that you want to understand more about and you want other people to understand more about. Um, don't go the other way of, of being dry and just uh, getting through the speech on whatever the easiest, most obvious topic is, because I, I, uh, I will not approve those, those topics. Um, and it's no, no offense if I don't let you uh, have your first idea. It may be that I've heard um, 10 speeches on that topic, and then that's not even fair to you because I would be measuring your speech against the 10 other speeches I've heard on euthanasia, for example. It's not that it's, a, it's, not, that it's not an important topic. It's just that I, uh, I want variety in my life, and that goes down to the speech topics I listen to as well. Um, so once you pick your topic and once you um, 
are confident that it's going to be a good solid topic, you then have to narrow it. You can't talk about everything that um, that Google tells you about the topic or everything that you know about the topic because, again, it has to fit into the timeline of the speech. So it's important to chunk it up to set your focus, as it were, uh, correctly. You don't want your lens to be too wide, like you don't want to use a telescope, you don't want to use a microscope, uh, you know, unless that's something you're specifically planned that you think will work for the speech. Um, if I want to talk about outer space, for example, that's a classic example of a topic that is too big. Um, I can't cover all of outer space. Maybe I want to focus on asteroids. I don't know. Uh, maybe I want to focus on Jupiter. However, Jupiter, pretty big planet. So maybe I want to talk about the Jupiter's red spot. Maybe I want to talk about uh, now. Maybe the the speech is about you know uh, weather patterns on other planets. Uh, if I can play around with it and pick something specific and narrow, um, then I'm looking at a good speech topic. Um, if it's too wide, something like outer space or just something that's big in general, uh, hard to get a good speech out of that because it's not focused. So once you pick your topic, yeah, that's, that's good, that's the first step, but then you have to focus it in and say, what specifically about this topic am I going to be talking about? Okay, so select your topic and then narrow your topic. Um, once you're there, the book talks about the general purpose, the specific purpose, and the central idea. The general purpose is easy. It is to inform. If you're giving an informative speech, so your general purpose is to inform. Um, the only other uh, general purpose we use is to persuade. Eventually, you'll give a persuasive speech. So general purpose is easy. The specific purpose um, always starts like this. Um, it says, by the end of my speech, the audience will blank. That's your specific purpose. By the end of my speech, the audience will understand the weather patterns on Jupiter and why they form the biggest storm in the solar system. Uh, one sentence that says specifically why your speech exists and why the audience, uh, what the audience can hope to get out of it. Um, once you got the general purpose and the specific purpose, you're ready for the central idea. And you guys already know what the central idea is if you've ever taken an English class ever. Um, they talk about the thesis statement. Um, so it's a one sentence. Uh, summary of the whole piece. Um, so, uh, for in the example I'm using, a specific or a, a central idea statement might be: the storm on Jupiter is caused by the following three factors, and then whatever those three factors are, um, A, B, and C. Or um, and that one sentence: the storm on Jupiter is caused by the following three factors, and then listing those three factors in that sentence. That's my central idea. Um, I call this the seed of the speech. If you know your general purpose, the specific purpose, and the central idea, you have basically all the materials you need compact into a little seed, um, and the whole speech can then naturally spring out of that as you develop it. Um, because what are my three main points going to be? Well, I go back to my, uh, my central idea statement, the storm on Mars is caused by these three factors. Guess what? Those three factors are my three main points. Um, now, as you want to generate your main points, I suggest you do the same brainstorming method as I suggested for picking the topic. Um, a lot of times the first three points are not the best choices. The first ones that occur to you are not the best choices. So brainstorm a long list and pick the ones that are most interesting and most appropriate after you have given it due consideration. Um, so we've talked about the importance of selecting a good topic, the importance of narrowing your good topic. Um, then we went through the general purpose, the specific purpose, and the central idea. Um, and then from there, how those can be a springboard for the main points. You can see that once you get this information under your belt, the rest of the speech kind of can write itself. Uh, all you need to do is add in your, um, your supporting material, which we'll talk about in future uh, chapters. Um, we need to you know, put together your introduction, conclusion, and transitions. And these are all things we'll talk about. But once you have the good topic, once you know what the specific purpose of the speech is, and you've set a goal that you can then go and accomplish that specific goal, um, and communicate the specific uh, central idea that you have set for yourself to communicate, uh, then you know you are on the right path to producing a good solid speech. So um, it's a very linear step-by-step -step process. Make sure you do the steps in the order that they are um, advised, and um, I think that you'll have uh, good success.
I look forward to um, seeing some, some unique topics and hearing some unique speeches from you guys this semester. Thank you.